Awarded more than £60 million, the National Institute for Health and Care Research, Manchester Biomedical Research Centre, brings together world-leading researchers based at six NHS trusts and the University of Manchester to drive health improvements and lasting change for all. Transforming scientific breakthroughs into new diagnostic tests and life-saving treatments, we deliver cutting-edge research to improve lives within 13 different themes grouped into four clusters. Let's hear from Professor Anne Barton about what our researchers from the Inflammation Cluster are working on. The Inflammation Cluster encompasses research across respiratory problems, heart problems, skin problems and musculoskeletal and joint problems. And what those areas have in common is that inflammation underlies all of those conditions. By grouping these researchers into a cluster, we're able to swap ideas, try and move things forward more quickly to get from scientific discovery right through to improving the lives for patients across a variety of areas. One example would be that we know that in long-term conditions, people are less likely to take their medication regularly and that's called non-adherence. And what we want to do is understand why people don't take their medication regularly and how we can help to support that. Because we know that non-adherence means that people are less likely to do well with treatment. And for each of the conditions that we are looking at, patients will go through periods where their disease get gets worse and we call that a flare and what we can do is look to see if there are common immune cells that that are always increased in a flare and if we knew that then we'd be able to apply that test across a range of conditions to hopefully be able to predict when somebody is going to flare and then we could introduce treatment to prevent that flare. In the integrative cardiovascular medicine theme, researchers have developed a urine test that allows them to detect a range of medications that are used to lower blood pressure. They are about to finish doing a trial to see whether using this urine test actually helps to improve adherence to these blood pressure lowering medications and that would be really important if it did, because lowering blood pressure has the potential to prevent future heart attacks and strokes. Another example of how we work closely together, we know that there are genes for all of these conditions that put people at higher risk of developing them. We also know that, for example, cardiovascular disease is more common in patients with certain skin conditions and musculoskeletal conditions. We're trying to understand whether it's the same genes that cause that increased risk of those complications. Another project that we're very excited about is about genetic screening of patients with rheumatoid arthritis because we know that heart disease is the commonest cause of death in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So if we could identify those who are at highest risk, it would give us an opportunity to recommend some preventative treatment. Researchers in the dermatology theme are investigating a range of inflammatory skin conditions, hair loss and wound healing. So if we could understand and prevent some of those occurring, that would make a real difference to patients' lives. Within the respiratory medicine theme, researchers have come up with a really innovative way of recruiting patients to their studies. To introduce a system whereby if a patient attending a GP mentions the word wheeze, a pop-up will appear on the GP's screen to talk to the patient about taking part in the Radica study and the advantage there for the, for the patients is that they get very rapid tests done to tell whether they have asthma or not and that type of innovation is something that we could learn from across our inflammation cluster. 
We want to involve people from all backgrounds in our research and one of the ways that we're trying to encourage that is actually going out into communities to talk to people at community workshops, at places of worship and through community festivals as well. We're really keen that everyone feels that they have a voice in research, that they are represented by the research that we do and it's just always good in science to discuss your ideas with people from outside your own particular disease area because you can get lots of great input that will help to move things forward more quickly. That speeds up the translation of scientific discoveries into patient benefit in the clinical setting.